Welcome to the Home Office Tour 2021. We are inside of my house. I used to be working up in South Jordan, about four hours north of here. We built this awesome office space and then COVID hit and everybody started working from home. We actually moved down south to St. George where we're at right now. And so I'm now working from home and basically built my own home office inside of my house. So I'm gonna give you a little tour, show you my working environment, how I shoot my setups, my editing bay, and basically all the equipment I own, things I like, things I don't like, and hopefully give you some ideas of stuff for your own home office. So let's go ahead and dive in. We have a few different stations for filming here. You have one here, you have one here, which is where I edit and do all my daily work. Then we have another one here, which is where you've seen a lot of my recent YouTube videos. So we'll get to each of these stations, but first let's dive over here to our charging station. We have a big outlet strip in the back there and everything's just plugged in charging. I've realized that it's nice to have everything charging in one location. And then up here, we got some of our stabilizers. We're currently using the Ronin S2, which is my go-to currently. The Glidecam HD Pro is probably my favorite besides the RS2, but I would say the RS2 is now taken over as my go-to gimbal. I'll take a video of Stockton so you can see his setup here. We got him on the Canon R5 with a 16 to 35 and the RS2. So that's the setup that you're seeing today. Now, also, so over here we got the Rhino slider 42 inch got a bunch of C stands throughout the office that you'll see today these are Kupo stands also we'll have links to everything in the description kit.co slash Parker Welbeck is where you can see everything that we own in this office and then over here we got our Alexa and I've actually programmed all the lights so that I can just automatically tell her to turn on and off a light that's something that I stole from Jake Weisler and Landon's offices that I wasn't doing that I realized hey that'd be nice to be able to just say Alexa Alexa, turn off the ceiling lights. Okay. Alexa, turn on the ceiling lights. Okay. And I have about 25 different lights that are programmed. I'll show you them as we go throughout here, but I can just turn off individual lights as I'm doing certain sets just by talking to Alexa. So that's kind of nice. You need these little plugs that connect to the Alexa. And then down here, we got the FTF gear reflector and just some other nicks and knacks over here in the corner. So that's kind of it for the charging station. Let me now take you to my main editing setup, my editing bay. This is where I spend most of my time time every single day is sitting here taking emails, editing videos, sometimes shooting post-production videos. You see here we got the red dragon. This is my old red. Just did a video talking about the new red Raptor that I got and kind of the comparison between the two. And this is sitting on the Satchelor tripod. Super awesome and nice to be able to have a tripod that can easily go up and down like so. And as far as the actual editing setup, this is an 80 inch white desk from Uplift. And I actually use the standing feature a lot more than I thought I would. I just get lower back pain. You can see here I have this chair. I don't know exactly what it's called. I'll leave a link to it in the description, but this is supposed to have good lumbar support and be good for your back and neck having that support. So I probably stand maybe an hour a day and I'm sitting, you know, seven hours a day. So you see under here, we also have a little cage to hold my main hard drive, which is 112 terabyte G technology drive. This thing cost me about seven and eight grand. And you see, I have a couple more there because this one is already filled up. In the back there is a 126 terabyte drive. And that one is brand new, just starting to fill it up. And then we have a 28 terabyte SSD drive, which is actually faster than both of these drives. Comparing it to these SanDisk drives, which is what I recommend for on the go. This is a four terabyte SSD SanDisk. Okay, so coming here to our monitor, this here is an LG 32 inch ultrafine OLED Pro display. You guys know I love OLEDs. At one time I was editing off of a 65 inch OLED TV and I got a lot of flack for it because TVs aren't meant to be edited on and it was kind of difficult. There were some issues. One of the biggest things people say about OLEDs is that they get burn in. Now this specific display doesn't do that. It has an image shift. I don't know exactly how the technology works, but it keeps it from burning in. So yes, it is OLED, but no, it's not going to burn in. They have technology to fix that. And the reason I love OLED is because you just get true contrasty blacks. You get deep blacks that actually look black and not just kind of a washed out version of it. Come over here for just one second. This is my old display.
display that I was using before the OLED. This is the Apple XDR 6K display, which I was using up until I started using the OLED. This claims the exact same contrast ratio at a million to one, but for whatever reason, I didn't feel like it had the same deep blacks as the OLED. So this has been great and I still like it, but I'm trying out the new OLED LG. And the reason to get an LG OLED like this and to spend a good amount of money on a good display is simply color accuracy for color correction. It's hard to tell if your colors actually look good in your grade if your monitor isn't accurately portraying how those colors are looking. So this, in my opinion, is one of the best monitors on the market for color grading. Over here, we have the iPad Pro. I believe this is the 11 or 12 inch. And this is where I play my video games in the middle of work. No, I don't. I don't play video games while I'm working. I work. This is actually for my teleprompt over here, which we'll get to a little bit later, but that's the main reason I got this was to read scripts on my teleprompt. You're probably asking, Parker, why do you have four phones? What I like to do is I like to put my iPhone here while I'm working and I like to have it facing me so that I can see all my notifications and be constantly distracted. So that way my phone can be upright facing me as I'm working. I just see my notifications as they come in. I'll see a notification. It's like, oh, someone texted me. I don't like to have to reach over here. So I have this phone here to read the text. Notification just came in. Carter texted me, Ugh, can't reach it. I pull it up on this phone, I read it, but this phone doesn't have service to text back. It's my old phone. So I read on this one, I text back on this one. Once I text back, I set them aside. This one is for texting my dad because it's an Android. <laughs> No, this is actually my uh, iPhone Pro, the smaller one that I reviewed, and I'll be giving that to a family member. And this is my old one that I upgraded from the 13, so the 12 I'll actually be giving away as well. And uh, <laughs> the Samsung's just to be funny. I'd never use it though. So that's pretty much it for the uh, desk setup here. Let's lower this for a second and show you what is my newest addition to this setup, and that is the Micromain 45 barefoot speakers. Last office tour, I showed you my footprint from barefoot and it was like seeing color for the first time but with your ears and then I upgraded again and again it was like seeing color again even more color than I had before with my ears so the sound coming out of these is just so crispy clean and clear it allows me to hear every minute detail in the audio so that I can make those adjustments to the audio so these are one of my favorite parts of this setup and I would point out that the speakers aren't really going Going to give you the clarity you want if your room isn't acoustically treated well and they aren't properly placed. So I had Brendan, by the way, come in here and help me place these. You want those tweeters ear level and exactly the same distance from each other and from you. So an equilateral triangle. So while I'm editing here, this is allowing me to have a really accurate sound, similar to how we want to have really accurate color. When we're color grading, we also want to have really accurate sound when we are listening back and monitoring our audio, audio experience. Right here, we also have the Apogee Duet 3. This is what the speakers are going into. And this is also what my microphone is going into. Right here, we got the Shure SM7B. This is my favorite mic for podcasting type audio. This I'm using for all my tutorials. It's just nice having that swing in on that boom arm. And then right here, we have a light to light me up when I'm on camera here. It is positioned in a place to light me up from this angle so while I am doing a tutorial here I get a nice drop shadow and the light we have right here is the Amaron 100X this is from Aperture it is one of their budget lights I wanted something smaller and more compact that I could just put up here hanging from this ceiling mount which I'll also leave a link to this one's a little bit bulkier than the ones over here we'll talk about but this one allows me to extend a lot farther and allows me to kind of change the position of it if I want to but on the light here we have a I think 23 inch dome from Aperture, honestly, not quite big enough. It works and it's softer than nothing, but I don't know if I'd recommend this guy. I actually ordered a bigger one that hasn't come yet. On the back here, we have an LED strip. This is from Philip Hue. This kind of lights up the back wall here. So I have these light strips throughout the entire office. We had one over at the charging station. We had one over in this corner desk and they're just nice to kind of give you an ambient glow and you can control the color. And I can turn them off with, hey Alexa, turn off light strip. 
So that's kind of the difference of how that looks. Just kind of nice accenting the wall. On the wall here, we have some acoustic panels. These are from Geek Acoustics. Kind of expensive, but they look cool and they work. These are two inch thick. Ideally, you're getting acoustic foam or acoustic panels that are thicker than that. Two inches about as thin as I'd go. I have some one inchers in here, but that's mostly for decoration. On the back wall here, we have felt right tiling that is also acoustically friendly, but it's like maybe half an inch. It's hardly helpful, but it's mostly for looks. So it kind of gave us a nice black wall back there. These guys back here are base traps that are about seven inches thick. And so it's good to fill up any corners you have in your room with those paneling. Again, we'll talk more about paneling in a second, but that's it for the back wall there. And last thing over here in my desk setup where I work is the Mac Pro. This is a $14,000, pretty well maxed out Mac Pro. This has been great. It hasn't been worth the price. They rarely are. I wanted to see how far I could push it. We'll talk about the MacBook Pro Max in a minute and how it pretty much stacks up and beats this in a lot of categories for about a third the price. So, and this right here proves that I am the world's best boss. Ask anyone who works for me and they will concur. All right, so that's pretty much it for this corner. That's where the editing happens. That's where the post-production tutorials happen. This is where most of the filming happens and where my live Q and A's happen. Anytime I do Zoom recordings or Zoom calls, that's where it happens all over here. So for this setup, we have the C70 as the main camera. That's my go-to camera for talking heads. The lens I'm using here is the 24 millimeter. It is with the 0.71 adapter so that it makes it a full frame basically, because this is not full frame. One of my biggest knocks on the C70, love it, like it, but I'm waiting for a full frame version of it. In this setup right here, it gives us a nice wide view, and that's pretty common in YouTube setup tutorial type things. And the reason I like that wide look is it just makes the room look bigger than it is. Anyone who's come and walked in here, they all say the same thing like, oh, this looks a lot smaller than it looks on camera. And it's like, yeah, well, it's because it's a wide angle. Also, I'm going to close these windows right here. These are all on a remote, which is super nice. I usually have the windows closed because that allows me to control the lighting, but sometimes I'll open them up and give kind of a different look. But anyway, this is where I'm usually sitting right here for these tutorials. I'm about three feet away from the lens when I'm here. This is where I would place my iPad so that I can read my prompt. On top here, we have the small HD. I like seven inches for the small HDs. I just feel like five inches, a little bit too small to be able to really see anything. Up here, this light is the Aperture 300D with a four foot diffuser. This is not an Aperture diffuser. I got this off of Amazon. Can't remember the company, but it's a lot cheaper and it's been great and it's nice and big again. I like the big soft light. And this is on a ceiling mount, a little bit different than the one over there. We got one ceiling mount holding the light and one ceiling mount holding up my microphone right here. The teleprompter we're using is Glide Gear. It is currently my favorite one. I used to use Pad Prompter Pro. And then of course we have another Shure SM7B right here. This one's just on a stand on the desk. And this is what I'm usually speaking into when I'm doing these. If I have something on my desk that I'm showing and talking about, that's when I would move this and I would use this mic, which is the Sheps 641, I believe. This was about a $1,500 dollar mic. This is a bit pricier. The Rode NTG3 was my go-to until it got stolen, at which time I upgraded to the Sheps. All of our XLR cables are Mogami. They are super durable and quality, and it is running into an Apollo Twin X right here, which is overkill and more expensive than it needs to be. I think that one was like 1500 bucks. Don't necessarily recommend that one. I'd probably get the Apollo Duet 3 before I get this one. It's like half the price and just as high a quality. So that's why he's over here is because this is where I do my live calls and I run it all into this MacBook Air, which I've had for about a year now. This is the M1 MacBook Air. The reason I got this and not a MacBook Pro was because I hated the touch bars and a year ago they still have the touch bars and so I got this in the meantime. One port we have going into our audio interface and then one is dongled up to a cam link, which then allows me to go HDMI into my camera to get a live 
live feed of my camera. Like I said, this is also a sit-stand desk. The biggest thing you're not gonna get with Very that you are gonna get with Uplift Desk is customization. You just can't do as much. They just kind of have their cookie cutter options and you either like it or you don't. And this one's kind of a wood look. It's not real wood, but it looks good on camera, so whatevs. And my headphones over here are the Sennheiser HD 650s. These are open back, and these are what I use to monitor audio from over here. But usually for Zoom calls, I'm actually just using the AirPod Pros. Over here, we have the AirPod Maxes, I think they're called. My biggest knock on these is they're not very comfortable. I also own Sony and Bose's noise canceling headphones, and I like both of theirs better than this. This probably has as good, if not better, sound quality than both of them, but they're just not as comfortable. And when you're trying to wear them for like a plane ride or something, after an hour that are hurting your head and your ears, you'd rather just have something that's comfortable and maybe not as good of audio quality. So also these are heavy, it's like weighing you down. Also, there's no way to turn them off. They die every day. That's the main reason I don't use them actually is because they're always dead. Let's talk now about lighting in this setup. We have our key light here. I turn off the actual room lights and I create my own lighting. And then right here we have what are called FTF gear tube lights. These I love. I have three of them in the office. This is a new product we just started selling. I have one set up over here on the floor. I have these ones actually propped up a little bit because we're trying to light some stuff up here. I love using tube lights and we've used Use some in the past from other companies that are great. They are kind of expensive, but they aren't meant to just stand up alone. You have to rig them up on a C stand or something, and I end up not using them as much as I want to just because you can't just quickly set them somewhere. Whereas these have a stand built in right here, and so I can literally just adjust this position anywhere I want, and it just stands where I want it, or stack up some books like this and give myself a nice rim light. So that's what he's doing right here, is he is my rim light. As I'm looking into the camera here, we'll cut to some shots so you can see kind of what that looks like. Just kind of getting a little bit of light on the side here. You usually want that rim light on the opposite side of your key light because you're already being lit up on this side and this side kind of falls into darkness. And so in order to separate your dark side from the background, it's nice to have a little kicker light, a little rim light to kind of etch you and outline you to kind of give you some separation from the background. So these FTF gear lights do a wonder at that. They are also color interchangeable. So you have kind of a 3200, a probably 6000, and then something in between. So what we've been using here is just kind of a daylight option and they are also dimmable. So these are awesome just for like a room accent, throwing in a corner, kind of giving you some ambient light. And they also look really cool on camera. I'm constantly using them on camera. It's nice having as a rim light and you can put them in frame because they just look cool in my opinion. So really like those. Then we have a second one right here that is lighting up this shelf here. We have my lenses up here. This is where I keep them on display slash grab them to be used. Here you have a 16 to 35 EF lens. Here you have an 18 to 35 Sigma. Right here you got the Sigma Art 50, the Sigma Art 35. Here we have an EF 50 and we have an EF 24 over here. And then we have the RF 70 to 200. I've started to move over to RF lenses and on my cameras currently are also an RF 16 to 35. And on my red over here, we'll get to in a second, an RF 28 to 70, which is currently my favorite lens. So those are the main lenses I use. Oh, also the Sigma 20 millimeter that's over on the Red Dragon. And then right here we have the Ronin 4D. We just did a video on that guy. He's on display over here. And then up here we have, I can't remember the company name, but something sketch, a logo of full-time filmmaker. And that's kind of my backlights when I'm doing these talking heads. I like it, I like the way it looks, but they're not great for filming with, which was the whole point of getting it because you have to use max brightness in order for it to not flicker. Also color balance, it's stuck at like 7,000 Kelvin, which is bluer than I want. Right here we have an Ikea armoire. This thing was about a thousand bucks or so. It just has so much shelving. Here's where I have all my audio stuff. Here's where I have like some GoPro stuff. And I love these separators. There's just so many little knickknacks you get when you do filmmaking. Oh, back here we got some lav mics, the uh, Sennheiser G4s. What I'm wearing right now actually though is a Zoom F2 into a DPA6 something. I can't remember exactly the numbers, but all the audio you're hearing today is from this lav 
mic. You guys let me know how you think it sounds throughout this video. And we have a bubble bee mount that is stuck on with some tape onto the front of my shirt. I usually put it underneath my shirt, but it is a more muffled sound. So when possible, and when it's okay, I will put it on the outside of the shirt. And this one kind of blends in, so it worked. Now, as a budget lav mic, we have the FTF Gear lav mic. This is actually version two. We had one that I promoted last year that was great, but we found a better one that's even easier to use and it has better audio quality. These go for 30 bucks. They plug directly into your phone or they can plug directly into your camera. For the price, this is one of the best lavalier microphone options out there. Again, it's not gonna be anywhere near as nice as something like this DPA plus F2 setup I'm using right now, but it is gonna be loads better than using the on-camera audio. We'll cut to the on-camera audio right now so you can see the difference that makes to use that audio with a camera that is four feet away versus using this microphone that is six inches away from my mouth. So lav mics, even if it's a low budget mic, is gonna sound way better than using on-camera audio. So this guy is called Basecamp from Polar Pro. This is super awesome to cut down on the sun reflections and also to be able to put in ND filters or polarizers or what we have in here right now is a blue morphic filter. This is one of the best matte box on the market. Really like it, would highly recommend it. Right here, we've got ourselves the FTF gear tripod. This tripod I use when I'm on the go, whether it's photography or whether it's just trying to quickly get something that I don't wanna to have to lug around a heavy tripod. For example, I recently did a gender reveal video and I just threw my R5 on here, took it to the backyard and just set it up. And it was nice just having something light and easy instead of having to bring a big heavy piece of gear. And then this stuff right here is basically a giant ND filter for your windows. On these windows, I have one layer at 1.2 stops. This window, I have two layers, so 2.4 stops. This one, 1.2 stops, and this one is just the window. But that's used a lot of times in movies. If you wanna be able to show the windows and what's outside the windows without it being blown out like it is over here. And for my set right here, I wanted to be able to show the windows open sometimes. And so in order to do that without it being blown out, I either had to bump all my lights up like crazy, or if I wanna just keep them where they're at, I had to control the light coming out of here. And so what I'll do is I'll shut this one because I don't want it interfering with my key light. And then all the background light I've knocked down with those ND filters. So fun little hack there for you. And you'll notice here acoustic panels, even in these corners here, you wanna try and have paneling in as many nooks and crannies as you can in your office or your space where you're recording. I've kind of gone overboard, but you'll notice that the sound in here isn't reflective. There's not a lot of reverberations. And that's because I've spent probably close to six grand just in acoustic paneling. These guys right here are super deep, a foot deep to be exact. And I think these are about three or $400 a piece. And I got eight of those. The deeper, the thicker, the more it's going to absorb the base, but it really does make a difference. And that's one of the biggest things I'd say most YouTubers, content creators, filmmakers completely neglect is acoustically treating their spaces that they're shooting in. And their audio oftentimes is so distracting, so reflective. We got blank walls, okay? We got a window. We got blank walls. We got blank walls. We got blank walls. We got blank walls. We got a flat floor. And it gets super annoying because they won't spend the time or money to acoustically treat their spaces. Over here in the corners, backpack corner, I got my old backpack, which is the ape case. And then right here, we got the new FTF gear backpack, which we just started selling last month. I wanted to get a backpack that had wheels because I love having wheels on my backpack because it saves my back when I am traveling long distances. Camera gear is heavy. Being able to just wheel it when you're going through an airport or whatever is an absolute lifesaver. Right here, we got the Amaron 200X. This is the 100X's brother. X meaning it's bicolor. You can get a cheaper version that's just daylight, but I like being able to adjust the color. And on here we have a little snoot that I picked up from Amazon. But basically what the snoot does is it makes cool shapes and outlines for a backdrop up here, which is a backdrop mounted to my ceiling that is remote controlled. And then for the backdrop roll, I believe it was like two or 300 bucks as well. But uh, let's go ahead and roll this down here for you. Oh yes. 
And now we've basically split the room up into two different sets. And so this is where I would be for set number three. This is an Aperture 300D Mark II. I think it's at 2% brightness right now because what I would do in this scenario is I'd say, Alexa, turn off ceiling lights, turn off tube light, turn off tube light two, turn off Westcott light, turn off charging station, turn off corner desk, turn off logo, turn off light strip. There's still a few more that are on back there, but you can now see that we've gotten nice and dark. So that backdrop is actually black. So we have this key light here lighting me up nice. And then we turn on our snoot. I don't need to stand up. <laughs> uh, Alexa, turn on snoot light. There we go. So you can see what the snoot light is doing here now. So that's kind of what it looks like without any filter, just a big old circle. And then you just got some different filters you can pop in here. Let's try some dots. Oh, nice dots. Oh, cool line. So now it looks like we got window light shining in. So it's kind of cool just being able to create what appears to be the sun leaking in in a very sharp, hard light. And then you can also throw in some colors like so. So that's basically what a snoot light does. I haven't played around with it a ton yet. I'll be playing around with it and you'll be seeing sets using it in the future but that's kind of this new setup that i haven't had a chance to use a ton yet but the idea of this set is i want this to be an unboxing area so i've done one unboxing here in the past i've been using my wood table over there and i'll probably still use it from time to time but what we have here of a 1dx mark ii it's kind of here as a prop right now got the macbook Pro Max, which like I mentioned, is pretty much as fast as the Mac Pro these days. Go check out uh, Max Tech. He did a comparison between this and the Mac Pro and found that this guy is just clocking insane speeds. But right here, what we have is something from V Flats. We'll leave a link to this as well. We have a couple different options of textures. We have obviously right here, just a white desk we can use. And then this guy gives us kind of a cement look. And so these are nice little skins Here's another skin over here. This one's more of a wood type desk. And then this one is kind of a black wood look. So a few different looks here for top down unboxing videos. We'll cut to a shot of an unboxing I did with this cement look. It's just nice to have for the product reviews that I do. But I imagine this being a place where I bring in products. I can do shoots with a nice clean backdrop, whether it's black or whether it's white. We don't have the white one here yet. Once I get the white one in there, I can then light it up with various colors and make it pretty much any color I want. Want. We'll also do some talking heads here, but I imagine this being more of the B-roll section. Back there, we got the red Raptor, a new camera we just got, and I'll probably be using that as my main B-roll camera because it does have autofocus. I can have it sit and focus on a specific subject here and not have to be constantly racking that focus. Right here, we have our top-down setup in a Kupo C stand with an arm. Right here, these guys are awesome. I think these are by Westcott, but they're like these little joints that allow you to kind of fine-tune exactly where you want this. And then right here, we have a Joby tripod head that I then mount my R5 to. And my R5 with the 28 to 70 is my top down setup that I use. And then right here, we have a little desk mount and on that a small HD with a cable going to my camera so that while I'm doing my top downs, I can watch myself and not have to look up at a monitor up here, but I can just sit here and watch it and make sure everything's in focus and whatnot. Oh, and over here, we have our newest addition to our our FTF gear family, the FTF gear condenser microphone. You should have already seen on my channel, did a comparison on that against the S77B, which is my favorite microphone. These are just two very different priced options, but hopefully by hearing these two price points, you can dial in features that are most important to you side by side, really hard to hear the differences in the quality if you know how to use them. So this is an awesome, I believe $70 microphone we started making to give people a nice budget option for doing podcasting, enhancing your Zoom call, Calls, YouTube tutorials, whatever it is, this is going to be an awesome budget microphone. Right here, this is the VideoMic NTG, and this is for my son Link to play with, and he comes in here and does his own audio checks. We'll show you a video of that. One, two, three, check, check. And this is kind of his general area he comes and works at. When he comes into my office, he grabs one of my extra keyboards and he'll sit here and play while I'm working and grab microphones and do tests, so. How's it going over there? It's okay. How, 
That is pretty much it for my home office tour for 2021. Guys, make sure to check out Full Time Filmmaker if you wanna see an extended version of this video. This is just a condensed one for YouTube, but keep in mind as well, guys, this is about 10 years of accumulation. I didn't get this stuff overnight. I've been working my butt off for years to be able to get this stuff, to get sponsorships, to send me stuff, to have enough money to afford a space like this. So understand that I started off with a T3i. This guy right here was my first camera. We all start somewhere. Don't look at this and get discouraged. Look at this and say, hey, if he could get there and I wanna get there, I can get there too. It does take hard work. It does take time. Be patient with it, guys. Don't expect stuff to happen overnight. Get out and create. Get out and add value first to a company. Find somebody you can add value to and don't just expect stuff to happen right away. Takes time, takes effort, but totally worth it if you're willing to put in the work. But that's all I got for you. Hopefully you enjoyed this office tour. If you have any further questions, please let me know.